CNN political analyst, Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan is with me. You have a new fascinating op-ed this morning on Volcker, making quite an argument that he uh, was acting on behalf of the American people, not uh, as Rudy Giuliani is asserting. Giuliani says, uh, Josh, quote, Volcker should step forward and explain what he did. I, I know you don't have the prepared remarks of what Volcker is going to say tomorrow, but you have a pretty good sense of what he will testify. What is it? Right. So my reporting is based on multiple conversations with people with direct knowledge of Volcker's activities over this time period and what he plans to testify tomorrow before Congress. And basically, Ambassador Volcker is going to testify that he was trying to manage an erratic president and a rogue per president's personal attorney who were mucking around in Ukrainian politics. And he, as the special envoy for Ukraine, knew that this was a problem that the Ukrainian government had to deal with, and he was trying to fix it. And basically, his theory of the case was that if he could just get Rudy and uh, Zelensky's advisors together, and also he pushed for the Trump-Zelensky phone call, that perhaps he could convince both Trump and Rudy that Zelensky was a good actor, that he should be worked with, that they should support this new Ukrainian government, and do all the things that uh, improve Ukrainian democracy and stand up to Russian aggression. Right, in the, the face problem, of Russia. Yeah. In the right. face the of Russia. Go exactly. ahead. Exactly. The problem, of course, is that it's not clear that Rudy or Trump was really interested in doing that. And, you know, it, it, they seem to be, according to the whistleblower complaint and all the reporting, you know, be more interested in pr pr pushing their own agenda in the president's mm -hmm. political interests. And well, this was something that Ambassador Volcker had to deal with. Look, and you write, quote, Volcker knew the risks when he signed up to help manage the U.S.-Ukraine relationship. Here's what Rudy Giuliani said last night on Fox. You've showed us a number of text messages from him, one even pushing you to meet with someone close to the Ukrainian president. So are you concerned about his testimony? No, I'm not concerned about his testimony. I have all the text messages. He didn't push me. He asked me. I would say push goes a little too far. Mm -hmm. He asked me to do it, and I said yes after a day's consideration. I do know they were kind of reluctant to admit that they asked me to do it. Uh, I was very happy I kept, you know, like, 13 texts that lay out the conversations in great detail. You make the argument that, that Rudy's argument doesn't make sense. Why? Right. Well, for one thing, you know, what Rudy is saying here is technically true. Uh, Ambassador Volker did ask him to meet with Zelensky's people, but it's grossly misleading because it assumes that this was the beginning of Rudy's intervention, when in fact, that's clearly not the case. And everybody knew that Giuliani had been mucking around in Ukrainian politics for several months prior to the, that text message. And we knew that because Giuliani was talking about it publicly. He talked about it on the record to the New York Times. He was tweeting about it, okay? He was running around meeting with several prosecutors trying to push Biden narratives and Manafort narratives. And this was something that people in the know we're mm -hmm. trying to deal with, including Volcker. Now, it only became public to the most of the American audience uh, when the whistleblower yeah. complaint came to light. But to, to pretend that, like, the State Department initiated this out of the clear blue sky is, just doesn't pass the laugh test. Volcker was dealing and, with the problem that Rudy had already created. And now that we have, you know, Volcker's sudden resignation, you've got that on top of John Bolton's resignation, Fiona Hill, who was the top year official to the NSC staff. You've got Dan Coates. And you still have no ambassador at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev. So that's where we are left in this right. moment on the Ukraine front. Josh, and everyone Just should, on that real quick. Yeah, you yeah know, sure. We've got a bunch of Republicans who volunteered to serve President Trump. They knew that it was a risky thing. And they've all been thrown under the bus by this administration. And what really suffers is the policy that they're supposed to be yeah. working on, which is U.S. leadership and U.S. support for a democracy mm -hmm. facing Russian aggression. And mm -hmm. no one is talking about that today. Nope. Well, you are. Josh Rogan, thank you. you Everyone should read your column. We appreciate it.